So I got a comment on one of my old videos, which was uh, titled The Power of Channels and Scene Controllers. I'll link to it right here, and you can check that video out. It didn't discuss this uh, guy's comment, which was how to minimize the gap uh, in between scene changes. So even on older firmwares in the past, I, there was a gap, but I, honestly, I never really had a, a big problem with it. It was there, but I kind of adapted to it uh, because even on my traditional amp, uh, there's you know, sometimes a pop or things like that when I uh, hit the foot controller to change channels. But I wanted to show something that I've heard people talk about on the forums and the videos. Uh, Cliff himself has mentioned a few things about it. If you want truly seamless switching between scenes, uh, it generally is, you'll hear a lot of that gap when you maybe you have high CPU usage, uh, but I'm gonna demonstrate even that there's not much on at least this latest firmware, 6.04. It's not that they addressed this. I know that, that CPU usage, they tweaked some of that so it was a little bit uh, more efficient. Other than that, there's really not that much of a gap, but you'll get that gap definitely when you're using uh, different amps. Um, at least that's my experience. Uh, one way to minimize this gap, and I'll show you, is you can set two amps on the same uh, scene and just bypass both of those amps and have them in parallel, not one after the other. So lay them on the grid, and I'll show you that. But this is just a really quick thing. If you really want that seamless gap between the two um, then scenes, then this is how you do it. So if you check out the screen here, what I've got is my default patch that I use. Uh, basically, it's got a, a couple different, a few different amps. We've got a Friedman HBE, we've got a Friedman BE, for a little bit uh, lesser gain sounds, uh, which I could also take an HPE and use a, a, a control switch to drop the gain back and forth, but I've just made it easy and got different amps using channels. So let's get started with this. We've got, you know, using the channels feature, it's got a lot of stuff on here, right? So, and we're hovering at around 50%. Um, there is a, a feature in here, that once you hit above like 80%, you start getting a warning up here, which is good. So if you have a workflow that is like, you really have to have zero gap, uh, maybe you're playing an arpeggiated pattern, something like that, then I'm gonna show you a method. It's really easy. It's just putting two amps in parallel and bypassing uh, the, the amps when you're on different scenes, but I'll show you a couple tricks that you need to remember to do to make this uh, work. So let's look at my patch here. I've got for, I'm on scene three. That's my default scene. It's really just gives me some ambiance in my headphones and it's not too much when it's out in front of house. And I have an expression pedal that's attached to it so I can control that delay if I wanted to. I've shown my live preset before and explained this on other videos but if you haven't watched those. So that expression pedal just controls the amount of delay mix. So without playing, scene three, if you look, I've got the amp highlighted here. We've got a Friedman BE. If I, I've got a hold function, if I want a little more gain, it switch, switches over to a different channel, uh, which goes to channel A uh, that has a Friedman HPE. If I hold it back down, it'll go back to channel D, which is the Friedman BE V2. Um, and then if I go over to scene two, this is a totally different amp. It's a clean amp and it's on my channel B, which is the Jazz 120, which is based off the JCM. Um, then I'm gonna go back to my rhythm, which basically has a little bit of a slap back and it goes to the same channel. I've got a Friedman HPE, so I, I can utilize the channels function, right? In the in-ears, it's nice. I think I was, uh, listening or watching Reb Beach and, and he has this running all the time so I decided I'd try it um, but anyway it works fine works well cool thing about the axe effects is there's many different ways to accomplish the same thing and you just have to find which works well for you so let's play a little bit let's go back and forth I'm gonna stick with scene one scene two scene three and you're gonna notice a couple things um, or at least one thing that and someone smarter than me may be able to explain this a little bit better. When I switch from uh, the HB to the Jazz 120, uh, there really isn't any gap at all. And the gap comes in when I switch back to the HPE. And I'm not saying this is amp specific. I think it's, it's probably something else, whether it be other blocks in the chain 
that uh, may be affecting this this switching. And someone smarter than me, or maybe one of you fractal guys, I'm sure Matt, you're probably not watching my video, but hey, maybe Matt Pecan can uh, tell us why this happens. Or Leon, all those guys. So I'm going to play back and forth. You'll hear the little gap, but I think it's, it's manageable. It's gotten better with different firmware. So, so I'm going to switch from scene three, scene two, scene one, scene two, scene three, and no particular timing. Uh, I'm using my Sur Standard Pro model, and I'm going to have the front pick up a single coil here, a little less gain. <laughs> gap there but let's go back and forth between scene three and scene two scene two to scene three and this is where you'll notice a little bit of that gap um, so there, I'm not sure what there could be something in my chain here that is affecting that and that you may have different results depending on how your preset is built so scene three <laughs> Very small, but it's not seamless. There's a, it was, you heard there was a tiny bit of delay. I mean, tiny. I mean, just a little bit. Enough of that. Let's go over here and let's just build this preset. This is why you came here in the first place. So I've got an empty preset here. Uh, what I really like to do is I have templates. So I do a preset new from template. I've got this basic template already built. I think that's a huge time saver. So if you can build out a scene that you know is, or a preset that is kind of your, your go-to start, Go ahead and build that out and then you just go up to preset and you can save um, as template and that really saves you some time. So if we click on this, it's got the basic, you know, 59 base guy. I probably should build another template that has my Friedman because that's my favorite one. So, but I'm going to, I'm going to select the Friedman BEV2. My cabinet, I've been really enjoying this uh, ML Sound Lab. Uh, the York Audios are great. I've been using those uh, as well. I'm going to go pick this Freedom one, which is, I believe, probably based on a 121 or a Greenback. I'm sorry, Greenback V30. Uh, I'm not sure what mics he's using, but I, I really enjoy this one. It comes in pretty hot, so um, I'm going to take this, if you will, go to the output. It's fairly hot, so I'm going to go back here. I'm going to take this and drop this level down. For now, that's fine. I'm not doing any boosting. If I was, you may want to take that level, drop it down more to give you some headroom so when you boost up, it doesn't uh, kill everybody or start distorting. So right now, I've got a basic leveled patch. Let's drop down here. This isn't about tone, so I'm just going to put another amp. And I'm going to put this Jazz 120, which is already here. I'm going to, you can use a different cabinet if you want. I'm going to run it through the same one, which doesn't probably make sense tonally. But, so now we're on scene one. Scene one should only be um, this HBE or the BE. So let's bypass that one. So we're still on there. I'm going to go to scene two. And we're going to go ahead and make sure this is bypassed. Right, just like normal. So now you have scene one and scene two, which is the Jazz 120. One important thing you've got to remember, and it took me a little bit to figure this out, but I saw it on a forum, is make sure that each of these bypass modes are set to mute when you're running amps in parallel like this and you want to do this. So come over here down to bypass mode in the lower right hand corner and set that to mute so you won't get that DI kind of sound. <laughs> Still on scene one, go to scene two. Pretty low volume. If you look here, Jazz 120 comes in at a really low volume. So we're going to take this. This one here, it likes just zero dB. And that's still not quite enough, so I can take the level and go up a little bit more with this if I want. Uh, maybe just a tad more. 
and you can boost it in other ways too, um, you know, input drive. Once you start really tweaking things, it'll start coming through. <laughs> Before we run through and I show you the seamless switching, let's go ahead and add some of the stuff that I've been using to kind of color things up. I like a little delay and then I like a little plex reverb. So let's find that one. Uh, plex delay and then you just pick the plex um, reverb in here. This is fine. Maybe a little less mix. <laughs> I like about this I mean look I just I didn't even do any tweaking in it it's usable so now the test I'm gonna take the same pickup I'm gonna put it on the front pickup a little bit less gain I'm gonna play some rhythm on scene one and then I'm gonna go to scene two then I'm gonna play some arpeggiated notes and then go back to scene two and see what that gap is like which should be zero <laughs> So there's that, but typically, you know, you're not going to hear much even on the using channels. What you'll hear it is going back and forth when you're arpeggiating notes a lot and maybe some other, you know, method in your workflow. But here's uh, scene one, arpeggiated. So if your workflow requires that you have this just zero gap, then this is just one other method that will do it. So I'd love to hear from anybody else that maybe is using a, you know, a different method to combat this or you don't use the amps in parallel. So if you're using channels, maybe there's some other method that I just don't know about to minimize that. But like I was saying, for me, I don't find it a problem, so I don't really you know obsess about it too much. But that's not to negate anybody that maybe has something particular in their workflow or their their set list that really requires that seamless switching as always please make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell and leave me a comment let me know what you're doing how you're switching your stuff if you don't if you hate the gap or if it bothers you i'd like to hear all your opinions so have a great weekend